what uh, what else do I need to know? Well, one thing is uh, is your battery. Well, first of all, your car choice. What kind of car do you want to start off with? Now, my favorite car to do is a GL Metro. It weighs seventeen hundred and fifty pounds. It has airbags in it. Has decent brakes in it, and they're relatively cheap when the motors blow up in them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't like metros, but when you really convert them, you you fix a lot of the things that are wrong with them when they're brand new gas cars, such as the motor making rattling and, and making noise and, and such like that. Mm -hmm. So you, first of all, you pick your conversion, uh, pick the car you want to convert, and you, you strip it, you take all the stuff out mm -hmm. of it. You take the, the radiator out of it, the exhaust out of it, the gas tank out of it, the fuel lines out of it. And one of the last things you take out of it is that you pull the dash out and you pull the heater core out of it. You get, mm -hmm. any, get rid of anything that had to do with the gas that was in that car to begin with. And, and with the Seattle Electric, and a minute ago I said electrical, I apologize about that, the Seattle Electric Vehicle Association, um, all of this information is the kind of stuff that you guys get together and, and talk about and then uh, are actually making these cars. So if we're ready with the next clip, uh, Steve, let's talk, this is actually the car itself with the batteries in it, I think is what our next. Yeah, yeah there, there, there's. Is uh, that the back seat? That's the back seat. We take the back seat out of the car uh -huh. And we take the gas tank out, we cut a hole through the floor, mm -hmm. and these batteries, uh, you can see the better angle there, you can see can that. Can you put the back seat back yes, in? Yes, you can. It raises it up about four inches, so you don't have quite the headroom. There's the BRB. What's that? Uh, the big red button. Oh, the big red button. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Well, let's go. Let's get back to load up some more clips because uh, are there any more big red buttons in the car? Well, there's all sorts of stuff. Now, and, the, and the big red button, is that a, like a bad thing if I press that? No, that's, uh, that's for an emergency. Uh, you know, there's a lot of experimental parts in these cars, and things can go wrong. And one of the, one of the typical failures that used to happen a lot was a controller failure, which was wide open, and, and now we've, we've always put the big red buttons in there ever since then, even though the controllers don't blow up anymore, just in case something does go wrong. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, if somebody calls and, and needs the big red button press, pressed, are you the guy that they need to be called? Well, no, they, they actually press, in a runaway situation in the car, they're the ones that reach up and push that button and kill They the do car. it themselves. Okay. No, okay, so we don't need a president to do that, <laughs> or a presidential <laughs> candidate. All right, let's go to the next clip, if we could. There are some more, uh, some more items that we're going to be looking at. Explain to us what they are. Here we yeah, are. There's a our battery monitor system. It's very important to you to know exactly how much you've taken out of your batteries and how much you put back in when you're charging. And this so it's a gas gauge, basically. It's a gas gauge. Yeah. It's a gas gauge, and it's a good gas gauge. And it tells you more accurately than your car gas gauge would if you had a gas gauge. Now, those more batteries? There's the whole set. No, that's oh, that's the, the whole set. I there, see. There's the whole set up front. There's a DC to DC, which runs the power. Oh, that's under the, the hood. That's under the hood. Yeah, it's a replacement the for the alternator. The controller oh. controller's in the middle. That's your carburetor. And the battery charger's on the left which is the, uh, you know, which charge your car up, which charge your batteries up when you're done. Now, and you'll see a big, long black tube across the front. That's a vacuum tube. Yeah, what's that red thing? That's, that's a little monitor to, that will tell you. It's just a little cheap gauge that tells you uh, how much charge you're putting into the charger. When you're, you're charging and you don't want to blow the circuit breaker, that will tell you, you know, you can go up to 15 amps. If you go to 16, mm -hmm. it blows, then you back it off to 15. And that's just a little meter that what's I What's that little button that you that just, just press? That just turns that meter on and off. Believe it or not, that's a little uh, $5 item out of a catalog that's, <laughs> that's very necessary when you're charging your car. Now, right now, uh, you and your whole association, everybody in your association is having basically to buy the parts, you know, at pretty high prices. Y yes. Uh, if, if GM wants to buy these uh, parts, uh, for instance, just to pick one part out, that motor, cost the people that build that motor $300 to build. I pay $1,350 for that. Wow. If GM were to build that, that would be a, a $50 to $100 motor. Oh, okay. So they could build a basic cheap uh, EV, for, I think, for under $10,000. And it would be better than anything I can convert. You know, and I'm sure that the automakers are just ready to build a ten thousand dollar car. <laughs> well, I guess they're not going to make a lot of money off of it if they do that. But yeah, they would satisfy are. a lot of the if, if there were some mandates coming up. Uh, I think they should build a cheap mm -hmm. car instead of a more expensive car. And there's well, there's let's a, say, go ahead. Well, anyway, there's a part of design of uh, this car too. And if we could, let's go to the next clip because uh, I mean, you know, heck, when I was in high school, we all had to have a spoiler on our car. Yeah, yeah. I put this part. I built this spoiler actually from the ground up. The normal spoiler that goes on the front of a, the normal front bumper on a car has got a big hole in it for mm -hmm. uh, to cool the engine off and everything else. And this this funnels the air around the side of the car. Keeps, yeah, that's not very cool looking, is it, Ryan? Keeps no, keeps that's the, pretty cool looking. Keeps, <laughs> keeps like the that? air from going underneath <laughs> the car and, and funnels most of the air up. On it. it probably gives me five percent more range in my car just having a, a mm -hmm. clean front end. Now. Uh, and, and we're going to go to this next clip because of all of the things that I saw, this is actually one of the most interesting, even though it's interesting in an odd sort of way, I guess. Uh, but I, I did pay $3.90-something cents the other day for fuel. Yeah. There we are. 
Yeah, this this one won't accept uh, that uh, funny shaped thing you pull out of the fuel pump. You got to you got to plug this car you in. You just come and you plug your there's, car there's, in. There's huh? no fuel in there or anything left in that car that will remind you of the fuel that used to go into it. Yeah, and and we're gonna let's let's go to the next slide because on the slide, I mean, it, it shows you really can just go by and just plug it in. Um, cool. Actually, yeah, that's right. We're going to get away from that, and that was that's a real picture of just the other day. Oh yeah, it's, it, just the last couple of days, incredible. Yep, and then uh, so I understand that there's some people at Boeing that uh, you know drive electric uh, cars, mm -hmm. and uh, they're just regular cars converted. Yeah. And what they do is they get to go and plug their cars in during the day. Mm -hmm. I think all major companies should do this. I think this is a good good uh, PR point for these companies, and they should. Uh, the, the amount of power they give out is like to anywhere between 50 and 80 cents to charge this car. It's nothing. They, they can handle that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we're at yeah. the, the fuel price equivalent, you know, is a, you know, less than a dollar per gallon per gas to pay for electric to drive yeah. your car. And, and we have equivalent, like this car here is about, a, the, the, all the batteries, the 1,350 pounds of batteries in this car is equivalent to about a gallon and a half of gasoline. Right. Really? Go. Wow. Okay. Let's go to the big question. How much does it cost? Well, again, this conversion is, is a $13,000 conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably on the cheap side. Most people that convert a car for you will charge you a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And this is a real conversion. This has everything your gas car has. It's got a heater in it. It's got a good heater in it. It's got uh, good brakes in it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it and, works and how long well. is it going to go before it runs out of power? It has a range of, this will car have a range of 60 miles. 60 miles. And this is lead acid golf cart technology. This is the stuff that we had, these batteries are basically the same batteries we had 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the newer batteries, the lithium batteries and stuff like that, well, it, right now they're just not cost effective. And how long does it, does it cost to uh, charge up uh, or I, take to charge up? Take, how long does it take to charge up? Yeah. If you plug it in the 110, it's about four hours. I mean, uh, the 220, it's about four hours. If you plug it into to 110, it takes you about eight to ten hours. So if you plug it yeah. into your 110, uh, well, I mean, will it charge it up half as much, basically? Yeah, yeah. well, a little bit less than half as, half as fast. Okay. All right, let's go to this last audio clip because, and with the audio up inside the studio, so let's go. That's, this car will do 70 miles an hour, by the way. This is not a neighborhood electric vehicle. And that wasn't studded, studded tires on the car. That was just the gravel that you heard going underneath the wheels. Okay, you know, same transmission, everything's the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. except for all the stuff related to the gas is gone. Huh. Okay. Uh, we got uh, we got a slide because we got to go to this slide right here because if you want have more questions and you're not going to get them from the website, go to one of their meetings. Uh, because I suspect they probably could use some more people there to ask some questions, and who knows, maybe we'll all be driving electric cars here one of these days. The Seattle Electric Vehicle Association, second Tuesdays of the month. Uh, go on the website right there. It's, uh, it's right here in Seattle, 7 o'clock. Unfortunately, we've got to go. Ryan, Dave, thank you very much for being on the show. Steve, thanks for being on camera. We'll see you right here on Public Exposure next week. Take care.